So here we have some decimals that you're familiar with, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, you know, I can go on and on, 0 0.3. Uh, 353. Three. These are all decimals that stop. They don't go on and on forever. Uh, in a calculator window, you would just see those digits and that would be it. Those are called, you know, non repeating decimals. Okay. And so these are the decimals that we have experience with every day. But there's also a large class of decimals that will continue to, to flow off of your calculator screen and essentially repeat with some kind of pattern forever and ever, right? And those pattern, those uh, decimals are called repeating decimals. Right? So let's say if I tell you or show you that you have a decimal 0 0.3333333 dot dot dot. The dots mean that this pattern continues forever and ever. So how do you write a decimal like this? We don't want to write all these digits forever because literally the threes are going on and on forever. You could never write them all down. So how do we write it? Really the best way to write it is to put 0 0.3 and then put a bar over the three. This bar means that the number three is what is repeating. So when you read this, it's 0 0.33333 on forever because that is what is repeating, right? As another example, what about, you know, 0 0.555555 dot dot dot. What is that? Well, as you might guess, the five is the repeating digit. So you just put a five with a bar over the five. That tells you that the five goes on and on forever. But there are other variations of this theme where the digits can repeat, but not quite so simply like this. What about 0 0.1, then a six, 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 dot, dot, dot. Now clearly the sixes are repeating, but the one is not repeating. So the way that you write something like this is 0 0.16, but the bar, you only put it over the six. You see, the number one does not have a bar on top, so that means it doesn't repeat. But the next digit is a six, and it has a bar on the top, and that means 0 0.16666666, which is exactly what we have here. And you can have different patterns as well. You can have crazy patterns. 0 0.123, 123, 123, dot, 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 right? Obviously, the one and the two and the three as a group are what are actually repeating. So you write that as 0 0.123. But in this case, the bar goes over all three digits. And it tells you that the 1, 2, 3 as a grouping is what is repeating. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And I'll just do one more example just to round it out. What about 0 0.426969699 dot dot dot. How would you write that one? Well, the 4 and the 2 is not repeating. So those don't have bars, 0 0.42. But after that, 6969 6, 9 is what repeats. So we put a 6 and a 9, and the bar goes over both the 6 and the 9. So 4, 2, 6, 9, 6, 9, 6, 9, 6, 9. That's what we have here. So these are called repeating decimals, right? And they have a pattern to it. You know, they all have a pattern to it. And we'll learn later that some numbers do go on and on forever, but they don't have any pattern. The most famous number is pi. And I will take just a quick example, just a quick minute to show you about pi. The number pi, which we're going to learn and use a whole lot later, it relates to geometry, is 3.14159265 dot 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 dot. But there's no pattern. Because what happens is if you calculate pi, notice these numbers don't repeat. There's no pattern to it. And if you keep looking beyond the four, on and on and on, they, there is no pattern to it. Those numbers go on and on forever with no pattern. In fact, we've had mathematicians calculate pi in a computer, in a supercomputer, um, and try to figure out if there is a pattern to the decimals of pi, and they can go to millions and millions of decimal places and there's no pattern that we can find. Pi is a special number. There are other numbers in math that are also special like that. They're called irrational numbers. Something that's irrational is kind of a somebody that does unpredictable things, right? Well, pi is irrational because it just goes on and on in a kind of an in, in, in unpredictable way. That's why it's called irrational, right? So in any case, this is how we write down decimals. We have some that don't repeat at all. There's no bars anywhere. And then we have straight repeating decimals, and then we have decimals with, with various types of repeating parts where some parts are repeating and some parts aren't. And then we have some decimals that don't have any repetition at all, and we have to make up special symbols like pi for those numbers. But in this lesson, we're actually going to be concerned with taking a look at a fraction like one half and finding the corresponding decimal. Now what is one half? It is one divided by two. 
So the way you actually do this is you put one under the division house and you divide it by two on the outside. Now, you can't really divide two into one because it's not big enough. So what you do is you recognize that the one, you can write it with a decimal, make it 1.0. And then when you put 1.0, the answer we'll have from our knowledge of long division will be a floating decimal point right above. So what you do is you kind of ignore the decimal. You do put it there, but you ignore it and you pretend it's like a 10 here. And you say two uh, times something is 10. You kind of view these digits together, ignore the decimal point. Two times five is 10. And then you subtract, again, you ignore the decimal. 10 minus 10 is zero, you have a remainder of zero. So what we figured out is it's 0 0.5, because there's nothing in front of the decimal, there's like an invisible 0, 0.5, that is the decimal equivalent of 1 half. And so we're going to go through the rest of this lesson calculating decimals that correspond to various fractions. Let's take a look at 2 fifths. What is the decimal equivalent to 2 fifths? Well, the way we do it is we take the numerator 2 and we divide it by 5. But we really can't do this division, so instead we make it instead of 2, 2.0. And when we do that, the answer is going to have a decimal point which floats right above. And now you do the division as normal, but you kind of ignore the decimal. 5 times something is 20. Well, 5 times 4 is 20, so multiply, subtract. When we get a remainder of 0, we stop. And so 2, two fifths is 0 0.4 because this is an invisible 0 0.4. So when you go in a calculator and you put in 1 divided by 2, you'll get 0 0.5. When you put 2 divided by 5, you'll get 0 0.4. And so we're just going to calculate you know, several of these just to get practice. What about the famous fraction 1 fourth? Right? What do I do to calculate that? You may know the answer to this, but if you don't remember, 1 divide by 4. Well, I can't really divide 1 into 4, 4 into 1. So instead, I make it 1.0. And that answer is going to have a decimal here. 4 times something is 10. Ignore the decimal. Well, I can go 2 times for 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract. Uh, again, this is not 1.0. Now you ignore the decimal. 10 minus 8 is 2. And you ask yourself, uh, after the subtraction, what do you do next in division? You always drag the next decimal down, but there is no next number here, but we can always insert zeros after the decimal point, as many as we want to, because 1.00 is the same as 1.0 is the same as 1. So putting another zero there is fine, and dragging it down. Now 4 times what is 20? 4 times 5 is 20 subtract, and now we get a remainder of zero. So basically what you're looking for is to try to get a remainder of zero, and then you can stop. Uh, sometimes, in a, in a minute we'll see it, the remainder of zero never comes. What happens is you start getting into an infinite cycle of digits here in the answer, and you never get a remainder of zero, and in that case what's happening is one of these repeating decimals is forming. But in all of these cases, we're able to cycle through the division, get a remainder of zero, and stop. Cycle through the division, get a remainder of zero, and stop. Cycle through the division, get a remainder of zero, of stop. So all of these decimals are terminating decimals. They don't repeat. And the last thing I will say is that whenever we're doing this, we're allowed to, in division, we, we subtract, and then we drag down the next digit. If you don't have a next digit, after a decimal, you can add a zero and drag that down. And that's what we're going to do for every problem here. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. 7 tenths. What is the decimal equivalent of 7 tenths? Well, we'll just take 7, divide it by 10. And we're going to make this 7.0, and the decimal will be up above like this. Now ignore the decimal for the remainder of the problem. 10 times what is 70? 10 times 7 is 70. Subtract, ignore the decimal. 70 minus 70 is 0, so we stop. The remainder is 0. So we get 0 0.7. And that makes sense because you know that when you take 7 and divide by 10, you move the decimal one spot to the left, 0.7. That's exactly what we expect to get. Now, let's take a look at the next problem. I want you to pay special attention to it. One third. How do we find the decimal equivalent of one third? Well, we go over here and take a 1, and we try to divide it by 3. Can't really do that division, so we just make it 1.0 and put a decimal in our answer. Now, 3 times what is 10? The closest I can get is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and then I subtract and get a uh, 10 minus 9 is, you could borrow if you want, but 10 minus 9 is just 1. After we subtract, we grab the next digit. But there is no next digit, so we add 1 and bring it down and get a 10. Now, 3 times what is, how close can we get to 10? 3 times 3 is 9. 
and then we put a 9 there and subtract, but 10 minus 9, again, is 1. And we start seeing a pattern form, because every time we subtract, we get a 1. And then we grab another digit, and it's going to make a 10 again, but that's the same thing we had here. So 3 times 3 again is 9, and we're going to get again a remainder of 1. And then we'll grab the next digit, which will be a 0, and the process will happen again. 3 times 3 is 9, and then a 1 will come again. So if I keep grabbing zeros, I'll keep getting 10s, and I'll keep adding 3s up here. So 1 third is 0 0.3 with a repeating bar above the 3, because if I keep going through this process, I can see the pattern has formed. I'm going to get 3s in the top, and I'll keep getting the same remainder over and over and over again. And so I know I don't have to keep going forever because it'll never stop. And I say the answer is 0 0.3 repeating. All right. Let's take a look at 3 fourths. What do we do for 3 fourths? We take the number 3, we divide it by 4. We can't really do that, so we put a decimal and a 0, and we put a decimal in our answer. Now, 4 times what is 30? The closest I can get is 7. 4 times 7 is 28. Subtract, 30 minus 28 is 2. I want to grab the next digit, so I'm going to have to add a 0 and make it a 20 down here. Now, 4 times what is 20? 4 times 5 is 20. And then the remainder is 0. I can stop. So now that the remainder is 0, I can see that 3 fourths is the same as 0 0.75. That is the final answer. All right, what about the fraction? I'll go down here, one-fifth. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to have to take 1 and divide by 5. So I'll put a 1, divide by 5. I'll make this 1.0 and put my decimal above and say, okay, 5 times what is 10? 5 times 2 is 10. Subtract, 10 minus 10 is 0. So I can immediately stop, and one-fifth is 0 0.2 here, like this. One-fifth is 0 0.2. All right, now let's take a look at our very last problem. It'll be a repeating decimal, so let's be on the lookout for that. What about two-thirds? Two-thirds. So what do we do? We take a 2 and we divide it by 3. We can't really do that, so we add a decimal and a 0. And the answer is going to have a decimal right above. Now 3 times 7 is 21. That can't be right. 3 times 6 is 18. That's as close as I can get. 20 minus 18 is 2, and I need to grab another digit, so I add a 0 and bring it down. All right, now 3 times what is 20? The close I can get is 6 again. 3 times 6 is 18, and again I get a remainder of 2. I can already see the pattern forming. I grab another 0 from above, and again I have another 20. But 3 times 6, again, is as close as I can get, 18. And I subtract and get another 2. So if I keep doing this, I'm going to get 6s forever and ever and ever. 0 0.6, repeating bar over the 6. That is the final answer. So this lesson is all about taking a fraction and trying to figure out what the decimal equivalent is. And the way you do it is you literally carry out the division process. Every fraction is a numerator divided by a denominator. And we carry out the decimal division as we know. And there's only really two possible outcomes that you get. The first outcome is if you just cycle through it and you get a remainder of zero, then you stop and you have a non-repeating decimal as the answer. Or you can keep going and going and going and still getting the same remainder over and over again, and you start seeing a repeating pattern in your answer. And then you can stop and say, okay, this one goes on forever, it's a repeating decimal, and write that down. I'd like you to practice all of these. If you're having some you know, some question marks about how to do decimal long division, please go back to the previous lessons and shore up your skills in that area. Hopefully this is enough, but if you haven't seen it in a long time, you may have to go back and refresh your memory on decimal division, which we've done many times before. I'd like you to practice all of these. Follow me on the part two. We'll wrap up the concept of decimal uh, division and converting fractions to decimals using division. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.